I went back. <laughs> So I think my first thing that I need to do about to start a YouTube channel is buy a new tripod because this one does not like me. No matter how I start this video, I am going to hate how I've started it because there's a lot of pressure to start your first one. Um, so I'm just going to hop right in. Hello, I'm Alice May. Probably should have bought something a little more uh, Instagrammable than my prep water bottle today, but what I had lying around. If you're here then you probably know me from Instagram or my blog, um, that's pretty old, probably Instagram, because um, otherwise I don't know how you'd find me on here. But I make sewing content um, and fashion and anything that really takes my fancy um, and I thought I'd start my very first YouTube video which actually isn't the first one I filmed because I actually filmed my second YouTube video first because for some reason in my head it made it a little less scary to do it that way. Anyway, I started sewing about a year and a half ago now? Probably less than that. You'll find out because I'm going to talk about my sewing journey in this video. A lot of these videos will probably be filmed in the evening with crap lighting but today I am in the only place in my flat which actually has half decent lighting, which is my bedroom. I know, vintage YouTube right there. <laughs> um, but we have a double window behind here, so it's the only place where it kind of looks decent. And I've just realised you could actually see out the corner here, that is my bag that I keep my fabric scraps in. <laughs> Probably should have checked that before I started. About me and my sewing journey. That sounds so... <sighs> ridiculous, it sounds so cliche. Like probably a lot of you that are watching this, um, I was very crafty when I was young. My mum is a very crafty person, she's very creative, and she always encouraged myself and my sisters to um, be creative as well. So I was actually a member of the Young Embroiderers Guild, and I remember making things like tie-dye silk scarves, and I made a cushion which I actually left on holiday, which was very sad. Um, the one and only time I made a cushion and I managed to leave it. It even had my name on it. It was amazing. It's a little patchwork one. When I was probably about 16, I did want to sew my own dress um, because one of my friends has had sewn her own prom prom dress with her mum and I loved it and I wanted it on the action. However, I after I cut the size, I sewed it all up or most of the bodice up, and then realised that the needle hadn't been um, uh, straight, it had been slightly off to the left, so everything was sewn with half a centimetre too much, um, like, too much seam allowance. So it was obviously going to be tiny, so at that point I was just like, no, okay, don't care anymore, and I think it's still in a bag under my bed at my parents' house. In uni, then, the basis of my sewing skills was pretty much like gluing and sticking fabric so I made I made some pretty cool costumes but they were all costumes out of just bits I had lying around the house so like I was Captain America and I used uh, <laughs> red and blue paper to make my shield because I didn't have any red and blue paint um, I what else was I oh I was a skunk so I had a fitted mini dress that was black um, that I then made into a skunk dress by sewing onto it with um, black and white fur panels so I was there was a reason I was a skunk it wasn't just completely random it was a Disney party and myself and some of my friends we went as um, the characters from Bambi um, so yeah it was it was like, I didn't take into account anything, like, that the dress was stretchy and the fabric I'd chosen hasn't, wasn't stretchy, so it was tiny. Um, and yeah, it was, but, and then I made a card tail which came up and in, um, and then covered that in fur as well. So I was pretty pleased with that, but as you can tell, it's not really, um, not really sewing, it's more just hand stitching very badly. So after university, I worked in a shop called the Spellbomb Bee Company. And if you don't know them, I'll leave their link below and you can go and check them out. Um, they are a company that's 
surprise, surprise, sell beads. So they're based in Litchfield and I worked there whilst I was kind of figuring what out what I wanted to do in my life and I had so much fun. There was actually some work as well. But um, I did also get quite into beading and so, and like proper beading, like peyote stitch and all that brick stitch and that sort of thing. Um, which I probably couldn't do now um, without the help of their YouTube videos, but um, I should probably get back into it. Um, so after I left there, I went back to university, I did a master's, and um, for my final project I did a craft magazine for teenagers. Um, I'm not going to show you because it is highly embarrassing because it has me on the front cover. Um, but if I ever do any videos about publishing or anything like that, then maybe I will. We'll see. Um, but for that I made bunting, um, as were the tutorials in it. Now, I could have chosen to make just three panels of bunting because that was all I photographed. However, I decided to make about 30 metres because I am a complete idiot and apparently I really like spending my nights um, cutting triangles and sewing them to the slipperiest ribbon alive. Yeah, I didn't even use binding, I used silk ribbon. Um, and I actually had to borrow a sewing machine off my lecturer because I didn't have one. And this experience, it didn't really ignite in me a passion for sewing. That came a few years later. Um, I was a bridesmaid for my friend and we bought very expensive bridesmaid's dresses and then I needed it taken up because they make these dresses for people who are like six foot and I'm five four and it's, it's ready to wear stuff just never fits, it's always too long. So I um, asked the shop, well how much would it be to take up and considering it's just a chiffon dress, it had two layers to it and that's it, they cost me £75 to take it up. £75! That's ridiculous! So then I decided, you know what? I'm gonna get my old sewing machine, the sewing machine that hasn't been used since I was in my teens. I'm gonna get my parents to bring it down and I am going to take this up myself. And that's what I did. I actually didn't even get anyone else to pin it for me. I kind of put it on, looked in the mirror and was like, eh, needs about that much off. So I cut about, I took it off, hung it over my mirror and cut off about that much. Um, at the front and then kind of curved it down so it were, had a little bit of a train at the back. Yeah, and then I just fold it over twice and then sewed it up. It did stay up, it wasn't perfect, definitely wasn't even, but no one noticed. And then after that I decided that I quite liked sewing and that I'd give it a go again. And um, so I picked up my first sewing pattern when I went to, to visit my grandma and I got some, no, when I went to visit my sister at Flojo Fabrics in Bristol I picked up a simplicity, I think it was like the 8 to 11, um, a simplicity skirt which has a waistband and a gathered hem and pockets and I thought it was going to be really easy because it said simplicity on the packet and I thought that meant it was simple and it wasn't. Um, don't really start with pockets for your first thing or gathered hems, both are horrible. Um, but it worked and that was kind of how I got into it. After that I set up my Instagram channel. I really liked the Instagram, kind of the whole world around sewing, and the rest, I guess, is history. I haven't done anything on my make since then because it was more about how I got into sewing. Um, because I'm going to do other videos on like my favourite makes and that, and I didn't want to get to, it to get boring and me to just be talking about things that you're going to see in other videos anyway. So I just thought, no, I'm just going to leave it there and. Um, so I hope you liked this video. I'm going to tell you what I'm wearing, which is the Sew Over It Camille jumpsuit. Um, it's, I'm like kneeling on my bed and it's quite awkward. So it's got a little waist. It has pockets, which were an absolute nightmare to put in. Um, this pattern has awful instructions on how to put the pockets in. Um, and it also has a facing, which I'm not massively keen on dresses with face, uh, jumpsuits with facing. So the next step, what I work, do, I'll probably do it with, oh, come on, focus again, will you? There we go. I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe. It's the down there. So I'm planning on posting once a week, um, but I do work full time, so who knows. You can also follow me on Instagram at The Stitch Edit, and my blog is wordpress.thestitchedit, I think, dot com. It doesn't have I think in it. It's just wordpress.thestitchedit.com um, and I'll leave links to that below. <sighs>
the end of videos are always tough to finish. So I'm just going to say bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye.